The challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on you huskies. <laughs> Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Spring had come to the Yukon, and the arrival of the boat, the Yukon Queen, at Selkirk brought eager anticipation to the many who were waiting to go back to the States. The evening before the boat was to sail, the cafe in Selkirk was crowded with many who had come to say goodbye to their friends. Among them was a sourdough, Joe Mullins, who was telling all who cared to listen about his future plans. Yep. At last I struck it rich up here. I'm taking my cash out of the bank and going back to Seattle to enjoy it. <laughs> Might even get married and settle down if I find a woman who'll have me. Well, with your cash, that'd be easy, Joe. Yeah, we hear you made plenty up here. Well, I have nigh on to 20000 that That'll see me through for a while, I reckon. I already have my cabin engaged on the boat, so I'll go aboard tonight. Be ready when she sails in the morning. <laughs> uh, man alive, it's sure going to be good to... Get back to city life again? Yes, sir. Well, so long, boys. I'll be around in the morning to say goodbye if I wake up in time. <laughs> After the old sourdough left, two men who had been listening to what he said sauntered out of the cafe. Imagine that old coot having 20,000 cash, Greg. I am thinking about it, Nick. I'm also thinking we could use that dough if we had it. Yeah, if we had it. Do you think he's got it in his cabin on the boat? Well, he said he was going aboard to use his cabin tonight. So I reckon he has. Well, Greg, you and I are going to take a boat trip on the Yukon Queen up as far as Caribou Landing. Caribou Landing? <laughs> Nick, there's nothing there but a trading post and a few cabins. We're not going to stay there, you fool. I know Frenchy Lemoore who owns the trading post there. He'll rent us a couple of horses to use to come back here to Selkirk. He'll pick them up at the livery stable next time he's here in town. You mean we'll come back right here after grabbing the old man's 20000 on the boat? Sure. This is the last place they'd look for us. The Monty's will figure that whoever took the cash went on to Dawson, or even further. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We'll be back here in about four days if things work out right. Uh-huh. And with $20,000 in our pockets. We'll go aboard the boat in the morning and buy tickets. Then we'll go ashore at the landing. Now let's head for a cabin and get some sleep. The next day, the Yukon Queen left the dock at Selkirk and made her way along the Yukon River. The two crooks, Nick and Greg, had gone aboard separately. During the day, were not seen together. That night, they met in the shadows on deck. We don't want to be seen together, Greg. So far, they think we're each traveling alone. That's right. You found out anything about that sourdough, Joe Mullins? Yeah, I've kept close watch on him. He's in cabin 102. I'm in 105, right across the corridor. Yeah, I know. I told him I wanted an outside cabin on the upper deck, so I'm in 320. How do you figure on getting the dough? There's several fire buckets filled with water along the walls of our corridor. Yeah, I know. What about them? I emptied one of them and filled it with old rags and paper. About midnight, I'll sneak out and set fire to them. Some of the rags are oil-soaked. But how will that help us the to get... The corridor is dimly lighted by a couple of hanging lamps. You be nearby, ready to run through the corridor. We'll both start yelling fire when the rags and stuff smoke up enough. I'll watch from my doorway till I see Mullins come out of his cabin. I'll run over, shove him back in, and knock him on the head. Oh, now I get it. You figure everybody will get excited and run from their cabins into the corridor. The old man will do the same, bringing his cash with him. That's the idea. In the excitement, nobody will notice what happens. You run past, I'll slip you the cash. You hide in your cabin. I'll go on deck with the others till the excitement dies down. 
When Mullins reports the robbery, they won't be able to connect us with it at all. They may search the cabins. I expect they will on our deck, but I figure they won't on the upper deck. I'll join you and your cabin shortly after. We'll figure out a good hiding place just in case. Why, Thunder, I think the plan will work, Nick. Well, sure it will. I'll go to your cabin and be ready at midnight. At midnight, the corridor on the lower deck was filled with thick smoke. Fire! Fire! Get out of the fire! A dreaded cry rang out. Excitement broke loose, and strangely garbed figures rushed from the cabins into the corridor. From his partially opened cabin door across the corridor, Nick watched Joe Mullins' cabin. Finally, the sourdough's door opened. The old man started out clutching a small handbag. Nick sprang forward and shoved Joe back into his cabin. Get back in there, you. Hey, he left me out. The boat's on fire. Let go of me. Shut up. This will take care of you. Within a short time, the source of the smoke was discovered and removed. And calmness once more settled throughout the boat. In Greg's cabin on the upper deck, Nick and Greg were gloating over the success of their plan as they took the cash from the handbag on the bunk. Uh, look at this cash, Greg. All ours. I told you it'd be easy. Yeah, it went off like clockwork, Nick. Put your share of the paper money in the bottom of your suitcase. Yeah. I'll do the same with mine. What are you going to do with the empty money bag? When I leave to go down to my cabin, I'll toss it overboard. <laughs> I guess the old man hasn't come to yet. By the time he does and reports that his cash is missing, we'll be asleep in our cabins. Meantime, in the captain's cabin, the captain was discussing the fire incident with Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. Well, I'm glad you're aboard, Sergeant. Purser's inclined to think the smudge bucket in the corridor on A deck was the work of a prankster. But I have a feeling it was put there for some purpose in mind. I agree with you, Captain. Purser and mate are checking the cabins on that deck. They'll be here with a report shortly. Good. I was sleeping when the commotion broke out. By the time King and I came to A deck, it was over. Come in. Captain, the passenger in 102, a man named Joseph Mullins, was attacked and robbed during the excitement. The mate stayed with him while I came to report the matter. That explains the smudge bucket, Captain. It started as a cover-up for the robbery. Uh, I knew it. I knew something must have happened. We'll go down and talk to Mullins. Come along, King. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston and the captain stood beside the bunk in cabin 102, listening to Joe Mullins tell what had happened. When the old sourdough had finished, Preston asked, Did you get a look at the man who shoved you back into the cabin, Mullins? I didn't get a chance, Sergeant. The corridor was dim and plenty smoky. How much did you lose? It lacked 200 to be in 20,000. It was in new paper money, all $100 bills. I see. Did you tell anyone you were carrying such a large amount? Well, I reckon I told about everybody at the cafe in Selkirk. I never could keep my big mouth shut, it seems like. If you'd left it at the purser's office, this wouldn't have happened, Mr. Mullins. As it is, we're not responsible for the loss. It's all I had. And by Jiminy, somebody on this boat has it. We'll do all that's possible to find it, Mullins. We have over a hundred passengers aboard, Sergeant, besides the crew. Some of them will be going ashore when we dock at Caribou Landing. When do you dock? A couple of hours after dawn. We'll search those who are going ashore. If that doesn't help, we'll search the cabins of those who stay aboard. That's a good idea. No use disturbing the passengers now while they're sleeping. We'll be on hand to help with the search when the boat docks at Caribou Landing. In the morning, when the boat was pulling into the dock at the landing, the crook Greg tapped on Nick's cabin door. Oh, it's you, Greg. Come on in. I'll be ready to leave in a minute. I got news, Nick. There's a sergeant of the mounted police aboard. What of it? He has no reason to suspect us. Oh, but they're searching the baggage of the people who are going ashore here. Oh, that's not so good. We've got to think of something fast. Maybe if we stay on the boat and go to Dawson... We bought passage only to here, Nick. Uh, anyway, our own money's just about gone. That's right. What's more, I heard the purser telling the mate that they're going to make a thorough search of the boat after it leaves the landing. In that case, we have to figure out how to get ashore here with the cash. Yeah, but how? Wait, wait a minute now. I have an idea. You bring your share of the cash down here to me right away. Then take your suitcase and go to the gangplank and be searched. Oh, what about you? Now look, as soon as you get ashore, get to Frenchy at the trading post. The telegraph company made him an operator and fixed it so as he can send and receive right there at the trading post. Yeah, but how will that help? Tell Frenchy I sent you. Tell him to fake a message to Joe Mullins on board this boat. 
Then have him bring it ashore in a sealed envelope. I don't see how that'll well, get Let me finish, will you? Frenchy will say he has to get an answer, so he'll have to give the message to Mullins personally. Instead, he'll come to my cabin, 105. I'll let him put the bills in his pockets, and he'll go ashore. Then I'll go get searched and join both of you at the trading post right after. Suppose there's some slip-up. No reason why there should be. Last time I was at Frenchy's place, he took a message aboard this boat and took it right to the man's cabin. The captain knows Frenchy by sight. My golly, it might work out all right then. I'll go bring the dough down here to you, and then I'll go arrange things with Frenchy. Greg was one of the first to be searched and to go ashore. A short time later, the man Frenchy came up the gangplank and spoke to the captain. Bonjour, Capitaine. Hello, Frenchy. What brings you aboard? You bring the telegraph message for a passenger. Just a minute, Frenchy. Well, this man's luggage seems to be in order, Sergeant. Good, Captain. He doesn't have the money in his clothes. All right, mister, you may go ashore. Thanks, Sergeant. How are things at Caribou Landing, Lamour? Oh, business is picking up now, Sergeant. I'm glad the winter is over. Oh? Uh, this message, Captain, I should like to deliver it in person. There's to be an answer, perhaps. All right. Who's it for? It is for Monsieur Joseph Mullins. Mullins? He's in cabin 105. Cabin 105? Are you sure, Capitan, it is 105? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, it's 102, Frenchy, on A deck. You know how to get there, don't you? But of course. I shall take the message to him right away. Are there many more to go ashore, Captain? <clears throat> Purser gave me this list, Sergeant. We've checked off all but three of them. They should be coming along shortly. Frenchy quickly made his way to Nick's cabin and tapped on the door. Frenchy, come on in. We. Oui. We'll have to work fast. Spread these bills around in your pockets quick. Oui, oui, oui. Hurry up. There. That ought to do it. I'll follow you off the boat in a few minutes and meet you and Greg at the trading post. Très bien. The Capitaine and the Marzi, they have suspect nothing. Once I am off the boat, voila, he's done, no? Yeah, it'll sure be a relief. We'll see that you get well paid for doing this, Frenchy. I'll get going. Nick waited a short time. Then, taking his suitcase, he sauntered on deck. But after being searched, he was allowed to go ashore. One more passenger followed Nick down the gangplank. Then the captain spoke to Sergeant Preston. Yeah, that's the last one to go ashore here, Sergeant. The thief must still be aboard. That's the way it seems, Captain. When does the boat leave here? In about an hour. I suggest you come down to my cabin and have some breakfast now. Purser and the mate will keep close watch to make certain no one tries to go ashore. They're both trustworthy men, and they'll obey orders to the letter. All right, we'll speak to them, and then we'll have breakfast. At the trading post, Greg and Nick made instant preparations to leave. Frenchy stood by as they finished saddling two horses. Now we're ready to ride, Greg. Yeah, but we better not stop and sell, Kirk, Nick. I think it's safer to keep right on going. It's all right with me. We've paid Frenchy for the horses and for his part in helping us. I think it was a slick idea myself. Well, if they find out about that fake telegraph message, it wasn't delivered. There's no reason why they should question Mullins about it. People get messages lots of times aboard the river boats when they stop somewhere. Else. That is right. Soon the boat will leave, then you will be safe enough. Yep. Well, let's get going. Let's get it. Come on, Frenchy. With that, you me. Get up there. Get up. Just before the boat was ready to leave, Sergeant Preston and his dog, Yukon King, met Joe Mullins on the deck. Well, Mullins, feeling better now? I sure am, Sergeant, but I'd feel a whole lot better if you found my money for me. We searched the passengers who left the boat here at Caribou Landing, but without success. Before we're through, we'll search the entire boat. You know, after losing all that cash, I didn't think I'd sleep a wink, but... You know, from the time you questioned me until ten minutes ago, I slept like a log. Except for the interruption when Frenchy Lamour brought you that telegram, eh? Telegram? What do you mean? Almost an hour ago, Frenchy Lamour, who runs the trading post, came aboard with a telegram for you. He said he'd take it to your cabin personally, since there might be an answer. Well, that's funny. Nobody came to my cabin. I didn't get any telegram. Well, Mullins... Glad to see you feeling better. Captain, Mullins just told me he didn't receive a telegram. Frenchy Lamour didn't go to his cabin. That's right. But when Frenchy left, I asked him if he found Mullins all right, and he said he had. Oh? Huh? Come to think of it, when you mistakenly said Mullins was in 105, Frenchy questioned it, as if he knew someone else was in that particular cabin. That's right, he did. The man who was in 105 left after Frenchy. If Frenchy knew that, man. Captain... 
I'll take King to cabin 105 to get that man sent. And I'll get my horse from below and go ashore. You mean you're not going to stay to continue the search? Delay your departure half an hour, please, Captain. If I don't come back, you'll know I picked up the trail of the thief. Mullins, you'd better come with me. Let's go to cabin 105. Come along, King. King picked up Nick's scent in the cabin and followed it down the gangplank to the dock. Preston and Joe Mullins went with the dog and waited on the dock while the Mountie's horse, Blackie, and Joe's horse were brought ashore. Steady, Blackie. Easy. When they had mounted, Preston called, Find him, King. Come on, Blackie. Get up. Within a few moments, King led Preston and Joe to the trading post. Well, Blackie, hold on. The two men dismounted and entered the store. Come on, King. Well, Sergeant, I thought you were staying on the boat. I decided to come ashore. What about the telegram you were supposed to deliver to Joe Mullins, Frenchie? Oh, it was confidential, Sergeant. Perhaps if you go back to the boat and ask the fellow Mullins... Uh, will... Stop the lion, mister. I'm Joe Mullins. And you didn't bring any telegram to me on that boat? <laughs> ah, if that is what you wish the sergeant to think, monsieur, I shall not say otherwise. Well, of all the nervy skunks, sergeant, I swear... Easy, never... Joe, easy. <laughs> Frenchy, who came here from the boat? Oh, no one has been here from the boat, sergeant. No one at all. Don't lie. According to the purser's list, a man named Nick Drake had cabin 105. I know he came here to this store directly from the boat. Find him, King. The intelligent dog sniffed a moment, and then going to the back door, he barked. What out the back door, eh? Huh. Both prints of two horses, fresh prints, too. This is most foolish, Sir John. You have no reason to... I believe. have reason to believe you waited in the escape of a couple of crooks, Frenchy, and you may have shared in the loot. No, no. You have no proof of such a thing. The proof will come later. Meantime, I'm taking you to Selkirk for questioning. Those two men seem to have headed that way. Saddle your horse, Frenchy. Watch him, King. <laughs> With King following the trail of Nick and Greg, which led directly to Selkirk, Sergeant Preston, Joe Mullins, and Frenchy finally reached the town. Though the crook's trail continued on south from town, Preston took Frenchy to the constable's office. After the constable learned the circumstances, Frenchy was held on suspicion. And then the constable joined Preston, and the two Mounties set out to pick up the crook's trail. As they rode behind King, who had again found the trail, Preston was saying... The crook's had about an hour's start on us, constable. The hoof marks show they've been pushing their horses hard. They didn't stop to rest in town. Yeah, that means they'll find a place to stop before long, seems to me. Yes, they have no reason to believe they're being followed. Well, let's hurry. The sooner we catch them, the better. Get up, Blackie! Come on yeah. now. <laughs> Nick and Greg had ridden straight through Selkirk and had kept going on the south trail. Their horses were tired, and they slowed to a walk. As they moved along, Nick was talking. It does me good to think we put one over on that Mountie, Sergeant Preston. <laughs> Imagine Frenchy walking off the boat right under his nose with the cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I suppose they'll spend most of the day searching the boat, while all the time they're going further away from us. Uh, get out. These nags Frenchy sold us get tired easy. Get we have to stop someplace before long and let them rest a while. That's not a bad idea anyway. We could eat some of the supplies we brought along. I didn't have any breakfast, remember? Well, neither did I. There's an empty cabin not far from here where I stopped them away up to Selkirk a few months ago. We'll stop there for a short time. Well, after all, there's no hurry. Well, that's right, there isn't. <laughs> I bet the robbery in cabin 102 on the Yukon Queen will be the talk of the territory for a long time to come. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to help the reputation of that Mountie Sergeant when folks find out he was aboard at the time it happened. Hey, I see a cabin ahead. Is that the one you mean? Uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get a move on. Get up there. Get on. Get on. Get up. Once they reached the deserted cabin, Greg and Nick decided they were in no hurry to move on. They ate a leisurely meal, and then relaxed on a couple of bunks in the cabin. It was some time later when Nick finally arose and wakened Greg. Hey, wake up, Greg. We better be thinking of moving along now. Yeah, I suppose we had. We're taking a chance leaving that cash in our saddlebags. If anyone started snooping around and found it, we'd be out of luck. Nobody would expect to find all that cash in anybody's saddlebags, Nick. Anyway, while you were sleeping, I 
Brought the saddlebags in and hung them over there on those hooks on the wall. Oh, good. I should have thought of that. We'll gather up our supplies and get ready to ride. Won't be long before we get the white horse if we keep moving. Come on, help me get the stuff together. All right. Sergeant Preston and the constable followed King around the bend in the trail. Preston suddenly pulled rein. Oh, 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 oh. Why are we stopping, Sergeant? I remembered that the cabin up ahead there is deserted, Constable. Be wise for us to stop there and investigate. That's right. If we continue on from here, anyone in that cabin that sees us coming. Yes. We'll leave the horses here in this wooded area and go to the cabin on foot. All right. Steady, buddy. Steady there. Come on. Come on. The two Mounties dismounted and led their horses off to one side among the pines. This will do, Constable. From here, we'll circle around and reach the cabins from the rear. They won't be expecting a surprise visit. That's right. Let's go. Come along, King. In the cabin, Nick and Greg were about ready to leave. Greg walked toward the front door, saying... I might as well bring the horses around front, Nick. Then we'll carry out the saddlebags. All right. Mm, that's funny. Huh? What's funny? Why'd you close the door? Well, just as I opened it, I could swear I saw a couple of riders for a second at the bend in the trail yonder. And they disappeared. Ah, you're seeing things. How could they come around the bend and then disappear? Well, they didn't exactly come around the bend. I just caught a glimpse of what seemed to be two horsemen and a, a flash of red. And then they were gone, like as if they turned back real quick. <laughs> two horsemen and a flash of red? <laughs> I'd say you were... Oh, wait, wait a minute. Greg, maybe you did see him at that. Maybe what you saw were a couple of Mounties. They what? wear those red coats. You mean, you mean you think we've been followed after all? I don't know what to think, but I'm not taking any chances. Maybe we'd better get to the horses and get away from here That's fast. That's the worst thing we could do if we are being followed. We'd be inviting a couple of bullets. But what if they come here? Well, they can't prove anything against us. That is, they can't if they don't find the stolen bills. But if they come here and search our saddlebags, they will. Come on, hurry, hurry. Get the cash out of those saddlebags. What are we going to do with it, Nick? Open the door of the stove, Greg. Holy mackerel, you're not thinking of burning it. No, not if we don't have to. We haven't had a fire in that stove, so it's cold. Open it. We'll stuff the bills in there. All right. Be well hidden here. Get in there. There. Now, sit down and relax, Greg. If those are Mounties and they do come here, they have nothing on us. But maybe they'll search the cabin. Maybe. But instead of going to jail for years, I'll set fire to that paper money right in front of their eyes, and they won't know it. Uh, you wouldn't. I couldn't stand for you to do that, Nick. Uh, sit down. Don't be a fool. All right. Burning almost $20,000. We huh? may not have to burn it. But before I let them find the evidence on me, I'll burn it pronto. That dough can't do us any good while we rot in jail. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Well, anyway, maybe we haven't anything to worry about. Maybe I didn't see a couple of Mounties. I might have just been somebody who turned back. Yeah, we'll know before long. Whatever you do, if the Mounties come here, don't go for your gun. Let oh. me bluff it through. If that don't work, there will be time enough for gunplay. <sighs> I don't like this. Now stop worrying. They may be looking for somebody else, not us. Oh, 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 oh. Well, hello, Sergeant. Last time I saw you was on the Yukon Queen this morning. You're not denying you were on that boat? <laughs> well, after the close going over you gave me before I went ashore, I knew you'd remember me. Why don't you and the constable come on in? All right. Come on, constable. He knows you're the man he was trailing. Oh, so that's how you did it. Smart dog you've got there. But why trail me and my friend here? They came to take you back for assault and robbery. What, well, what did we steal, if anything? You can't prove anything against us. Might interest you to know that Frenchy's done some talking. Holy smoke, Nick. Shut up, Greg. Well, let Frenchy say all he wants. All we did was buy a couple of horses from him. The Mounties have to prove what they say by showing the evidence. We'll take you back for questioning regardless. But before we go, we'll search this cabin thoroughly. Uh, while you're searching, I'll start a fire on the stove, if you don't mind. It's getting chilly. Sit down. No. I told you not to move. Look around the cabin, Constable. I'll keep them covered. All right. Let's start by looking in their saddlebags. The Constable opened the saddlebags, which he found to be empty. Then he began a methodical search around the cabin, but without success. Money doesn't seem to be in here anywhere, Sergeant. Oh? I've been wondering why they brought those saddlebags in with them since they're empty. Yeah. It really doesn't make sense, come to think of what it. What are you talking about? We had a few supplies in those saddlebags. That's why we carried them in with us. Look, uh, how... 
about starting a fire in the stove while we're talking? No use being uncomfortable? All right, Constable. Go ahead. Stove's all set. All you have to do is put a match to the paper at the bottom. All right. I'll start the fire. You don't even have to lift the lid. Just light it through the draft opening at the bottom. Don't have to tell me how to start a fire. Nick, I'm not cool. Why do you Shut have... Shut up. A little heat will do us all good. Wait, Constable. Hold it. What's the matter, Sergeant? Open the lid of that stove and look in it before you light it. All right. Sergeant, stove stuffed with new bills. I noticed they were both tense when you started to light that fire. That's the evidence. You're not taking me. Hold it. Oh, Preston's I... bullet hit Nick's arm, causing him to drop his gun. As Greg went for his gun, the Mountie sprang forward and landed a hard right to Greg's jaw. Uh, Greg reeled back, arm. still holding his gun. Preston lunged, grabbed Greg's gun arm and twisted. Uh, drop that gun. Let go, you'll break my arm. Drop the gun, quick. There, I dropped it. And this will drop you. Uh, at that moment, the constable moved in to help if necessary. I'll put the cuffs on him, Sergeant. Neither Molly right, saw Nick, who, in spite of his wound, reached right, down right. and picked up his gun from the floor, aiming it at the sergeant. But King saw it and sprang forward. <laughs> the valiant dog moved in like lightning, grabbing Nick's good arm and knocking the crook to the floor. Uh, take him off! Help! Take him away! Down, King. Down, fellow. Oh, my arm. Well, Drake, you said we'd need the evidence to prove you guilty. Those new $100 bills the constable found in the stove is the evidence. We arrest both of you in the name of the Queen for Nick, robbery. Nick and Frenchy really did it. You're Thanks. in this as much as I am, Greg. You and Frenchy are both in it. Looks as if they'll all talk freely, Sergeant. Should be easy to convict them. That's right, Constable. No matter how clever a criminal thinks he is, he always makes a slip, and these crooks are no exception. We'll get them back to Selkirk and put them in jail with their friend Frenchy. Joe Mullins is going to get his money back, and when that's done, I'll be glad to say this case is closed. In our next adventure, three outlaws are watching the clearing and the woods beyond from the window of their darkened cabin. You're under arrest, Bat. Come out of there with your hands up. He thinks I'm the only one in here. So I'll do as he says. I'll surrender. You'll hang for murder if the sergeant ever gets you back to Dawson. I'm going to walk out of here with my hands up. The sergeant will step into the clearing. And then you let him have it. Right. The outlaw opens the door of the cabin and steps outside, his hands above his head. The sergeant steps into the open, and then a volley of shots rings out. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The Challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.